This is the first video in a series in which we try to look for applications of Maxwell relations. If you don't know what Maxwell relations are, I recommend you to check out the last few videos uh, in this series. Alright, so uh, here you have a rundown of the uh, four Maxwell relations that we have obtained from four thermodynamic uh, state functions, internal energy, enthalpy, Hochul's energy and Gibbs energy. And our goal then is to try to look for applications of this beautiful science that we have been able to uh, do in the last few videos. Right, so uh, in this first video of uh, this series of applications of Maxwell relations, we're going to try to see uh, how uh, the internal energy can be expressed as a function of easy to control variables. In fact, we actually have seen that for the internal energy, it's very convenient to express it as a function of volume and temperature. Right? And volume and temperature, again, are easy to control variables uh, that we really can, can uh, modify in the laboratory in a convenient way. We actually have seen that when you express this uh, internal energy as a function of volume and temperature, then uh, the total derivatives look like this. You will have a partial derivative with respect to volume at a constant temperature, and you will also have a partial derivative with respect to temperature at constant volume. And we know uh, what these uh, first derivatives are. We've already talked about them earlier in this course, right? Notice that this is the heat capacity at constant volume. That's uh, a value that we can measure in the lab, and we know those values for a variety of substances. And then this was a little, li a little bit less clear. We defined that as the internal pressure of a gas uh, but we didn't know a way to measure it, there were no tables about this. The most that we uh, were able to discuss about this variable was the following. Imagine that you have a gas and you're trying to see how the internal energy of the gas changes when you increase the volume. Right? So we said that, well, for ideal gases, because the internal energy does not depend on volume, uh, this internal pressure will be zero. But for real gases, when you have attractions or, or repulsions, any type of interaction, then you will have that that internal pressure might not be zero. Actually, it is not zero. We also said that the sign of that internal pressure can actually be indicative of the type of interactions that are dominant in your gas. So for example, suppose you have attractions uh, dominating in your gas. When you try to increase the volume, what happens is that, well, the molecules are resistant that increase in volume because they're being attracted to each other, right? So that means that if you want to separate them and, and for those molecules to increase the entire volume, you actually have to break apart that, that interaction, that attractive interaction, and that is an increase in energy, right? So for when attractions dominate, then this internal pressure should be a positive uh, number. Uh, but if repulsions dominate, right, so you have the molecules um, uh, in a situation which the repulsions dominate, right, so they are trying to get away from each other, when you increase the volume, then what happens is that the energy goes down, right, that, that the repulsions lower as you increase the separation between the particles, and uh, that means that if the internal energy decreases when you increase the volume, that should be a negative sign for the internal pressure. Okay, so when, when repulsions are dominant, then this should be negative. If attractions are dominant, then this should be positive. But again, we never saw any numbers. These things, we, we said that Joule attempted to measure these values but failed, uh, so we haven't seen many tables. Now, what we're going to do then in the rest of this video is try to see how Maxwell uh, relations can actually help you understand a little bit more what this uh, first derivative really is, right, and how to measure it. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is just um, start with the uh, fundamental equation for the internal energy. Okay, the fundamental equation for the internal energy is this dependence of uh, that state function on its natural var variables uh, that are entropy and volume. All right, our goal then is to try to see what is the value of this partial derivative that, again, is not, it's not obvious what it is. We're, we're kind of hand waving around what that internal pressure is. Well, we can obtain that uh, uh, partial derivative from this expression by just dividing over the differential of V. Right, so let me see if I can uh, do that for you. All right, so if we uh, take that first derivative with respect to V right here and enforce constant temperature conditions, 
right? So let's do that. And that means that I have to divide this also by uh, differential of volume. I enforce constant temperature. All right. Great. Uh, we now have a different definition of what the internal pressure is. Okay, great. This looks like it's not useful either because you have here a derivative that is just how the entropy changes with volume. It looks like we haven't made a much progress. But of course, that's where Maxwell relations uh, come in handy. If we look at the Maxwell relation from the Helmholtz energy, now we have that this derivative that is here, right, can be equated to this one. All right, so that is going to be T differential of P or differential of uh, T at constant volume minus pressure. And what is more, we also saw in the video where we derived this Maxwell relation that this is equal to an easy to determine uh, ratio of experimental observables, which was the expansion coefficient of the substance uh, divided over the isothermal compressibility. Right, so, so that first derivative that is, uh, was a little bit loose in, a, in its definition, right, being equal to the internal pressure, it's also uh, equal to something that looks really simple. It's just the temperature multiplied by the expansion coefficient divided by the isothermal compressibility minus pressure. And notice how simple these variables are, right? At least temperature, we have perfect control of temperature in the laboratory. Pressure, we also have a really good control of the pressure in the laboratory. And then that's the expansion coefficient, which we know for substances at, at, at a condition of temporal pressure. And that is the isothermal compressibility. All right, so uh, again, this is a, a beautiful example for how Maxwell relations really help you understand uh, deeper implications of state functions like the internal energy, enthalpy, and so forth. Okay, in this particular case, what we've been able to see is that uh, uh, the way that the internal energy changes with volume right, uh, has a very nice relation. And something that is important is that this is universal. This uh, has no limitations, right? That applies to an ideal gas, it applies to a real gas, it applies to solids, it applies to liquids, right? So it has a universal application, which is also very, very convenient. Right, in the next videos, we're going to then continue with this uh, exploration of, of ways in which the Maxwell relations are useful. And then we will be looking at uh, uh, total derivatives for enthalpy and so forth.